Okay, I'll go ahead and start here. <clears throat> uh, my name is Chad Peppers, and the uh, topic I'll be covering today is Drupal 8 entities. Uh, I do appreciate everybody coming uh, to listen to me here. Um, a little bit about myself first. I am a senior Drupal developer and architect for a company called Littler Mendelssohn. They're a corporate law firm based out of Kansas City. Um, I do internal and some front-facing websites for them in Drupal. Um, I've been developing on Drupal for about seven years now, and I actually didn't start developing on Drupal until Drupal 7 came out, uh, but I have a little bit of experience with uh, doing Drupal 6 and 7 and 8. Um, and so that's all I do pretty much all day is uh, Drupal. Um, and uh, a little bit more about myself. Uh, my hobbies is, um, unfortunately, my hobby is programming too. And I'm sure a lot of people in here is like that. Um, hang out with my family. And then uh, I enjoy, uh, I'm in the middle of making a game actually using Unity. So that's kind of a side hobby as well, which I might shamelessly plug at the end here. Um, um, and then, like I said, all, that's all I do is Drupal. Um, has anybody seen that YouTube video, video every day I'm Drupaling? Yes. He has. That's pretty much, uh, if, you, if you haven't heard it, it's a Drupal rap song. It's called Every Day I'm Drupaling. That's pretty much my life, I feel. Um, if anyone wants to follow along with the, de uh, the slides, that is the address. Um, if anybody wants to, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll just continue. Um, so here's what I'm going to cover. Uh, this is just an overview. Uh, what are entities in Drupal? Uh, working with the entity CRUD system and the uh, entity framework. Uh, finding entities with the entity query. And then a little bit about uh, hooking into the entity framework uh, with hooks. I'm not going to cover everything about it because that would be like, that would be several sessions to cover everything there is about entities. Uh, but uh, I figured I'd give a kind of a high level overview with a little bit of code uh, so that it kind of uh, has a wide range of audience. Um, um, if anybody's ever seen this, um, I think this image is funny. It's the Drupal learning curve. Because um, I know I've, if you've been developing on Drupal, there's that, that window where you first started Drupal and it just it seemed like this. And then once you hit that hump, um, if it's a lot better after that, but I thought I'd just share that image. Uh, there are some assumptions I'll have for the class, just uh, uh, from for the material I'll be covering. Uh, I'll assume that you've probably at least installed Drupal before, maybe, uh, or at least familiar with the uh, Drupal administration, um, and then maybe understanding the basic field system um, to help you kind of understand the, the material a little bit more. Uh, but if not, I think you can still benefit from this. Uh, what are entities? Um, entities are an integral part of Drupal. They make up the building blocks of Drupal and uh, they uh, provide the, the visible content uh, seen to the end user. Uh, most common types of entities that you're familiar with are nodes, users, uh, taxonomies, and stuff like that. Those are all, all entities. Um, for developers, uh, entities are objects in the traditional sense. And then if you are familiar with the model view controller design pattern, uh, entities would be considered the model in that pattern. Um, there's three places that entities usually exist. Uh, they're in, uh, there's core Drupal entities, um, like I just explained with the nodes, the users, taxonomies, and stuff like that. There's entities that exist in contrib modules, and then you can also create your own custom entities um, in Drupal. And the image there is actually pulled from uh, Drupal.org, and it just shows uh, four different types of entities that are most common, which are content, users, taxonomy, and, and comments. Um, in Drupal 8, there's two types of entities. Uh, there's configuration entities and then content entities. Uh, configuration entities are more like settings, roles, and image styles and stuff like that, which uh, before in the past were stored uh, a lot of times using like variable get and variable set. 
but in Drupal they've kind of moved that into their own entities so that it does interact with the uh, the entity framework. Uh, the other type is content entities, uh, which are most people are familiar with, which are nodes, taxonomies, users, um, and these are usually fillable. Uh, configuration entities, uh, I skipped over that, but they're usually not fillable, so you don't add fields to the configuration entities generally. Uh, the image is shown here. You can, uh, there are two types of uh, entities, uh, the configuration entity, which are roles, and then most familiar, the content types, which is the name <coughs> entity, um, as most people are familiar with. Uh, this uh, shows a little bit of the code on how entities um, are structured in the Drupal code. Um, so these, this is geared more probably towards developers. But as you can see on the first line there, uh, the abstract class entity um, is, the mo is the top level class that uh, the framework uses. Uh, the second um, set of code there is the abstract class content entity base. So if you're creating a content entity, you're going to be using, uh, you're going to be extending or inheriting from this class. Um, the third code is the, the node class, which you can see it extends from the content entity base. So if you want to build a content entity, uh, you will be extending from that class to, to use all the benefits of, uh, of that. Um, as the same as the class block, it extends the config entity base, which on the earlier slides we were saying there's config entities and content entities. And this just kind of uh, shows uh, um, how it works in the code. Generally, you probably won't ever deal with this at all, but it's just something I wanted to show just for visual. Um, there's some terminology that is good to know about entities, so uh, if you're out there researching and looking and stuff about Drupal, these are common keywords, which are bundles and fields. Uh, bundles are basically subtypes of entities. Uh, the best example to use is a uh, bundle uh, is through the node uh, system. Um, anytime you create a content type, uh, you create a subtype of the entity or a bundle. So uh, Drupal ships, uh, when you install it with an article and a basic page, those are content types which are bundles of the node entity. Um, so uh, subtypes and bundles, they share functionality and properties of that entity type. So for example, in nodes, they share things like the author, status, promoted to home page. Those are shared across all bundles. So um, they have some things that are sh uh, shared and, and maybe even methods and classes and stuff like that. Um, let's see. Uh, some entities only have one bundle, which like the users, it only has one bundle, which is a user. Um, and then uh, fields, uh, fields are dynamic, uh, dynamically created in Drupal or statically created. Uh, they're data elements that can be attached to the entities uh, so they can capture information. Um, if you've been developed on Drupal for very long, you probably are familiar with the field system. Um, the, so the images here uh, show the content types, which are article and basic page. And like I said before, when you create a content type, you're actually creating a bundle of the node entity. Um, and then the second image is just uh, the fields. Uh, There's some changes from Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 about the entity system. Um, Drupal 8, uh, they have significantly changed on the back end. If, you're, if you've never really dealt with anything on the back end like that, you probably won't notice the difference. Or if you're a content manager, you won't notice that the entity framework has kind of changed. Uh, the entity API was added into core in Drupal 8, uh, which in the past, the entity API was a contrib module that extended from the core uh, entity system. Um, being it that it's now part of core, it allows for better um, extensibility and it sets standards for how to handle data in Drupal. And it also allows for better testing, uh, which are all good things. Um, entities are now specifically type classes rather than in Drupal 7, they were STD classes. Um, 
And for those who may not know what STD class, it is a uh, way to dynamically create classes or objects in PHP on the fly. So you don't actually have to have a file that says class, whatever. Um, the, you can just generate them on the fly. And that's how Drupal 7 handled it. And uh, it's changed in Drupal 8 where there's actually, as we've seen a couple slides back where it said class node, entities are now required to actually have a class or a PHP uh, class in there. So that's kind of a big, uh, big change on that end. Um, entity CRUD. Uh, for those who don't know what CRUD is, it's a create, read, update, delete, and it's basically how you handle data in, uh, in not only Drupal, but pretty much any language or content that you deal with in any uh, CMS or anything. Um, Drupal 8 CRUD operations are built into core. Um, which again was not in Drupal 7 without using the Entity API contrib module. Um, in Drupal 7, there were two ways you could handle entities. One required uh, the coder to actually build that CRUD operation for the entity that's that was that uh, you uh, that the coder was providing, and that's how we ended up with things uh, functions like node save or user save or node load and that kind of stuff is that the coder actually had to build that operation in there. And uh, the, the second way which Drupal started moving towards to try to standardize how to handle entities was using the API, entity API contrib modules. And that extended more of the core functionality to, to handle those. Um, the entity API also uh, provided a wrapper class to handle all these entities called the uh, entity metadata wrapper. Um, has anybody ever had to do that in Drupal? Um, that was kind of a, I'll, and some of the examples I'll show both seven and eight, but it was, it was Drupal 7's way of trying to modernize the way that it was handling, and so it created this entity metadata wrapper class that, that you could use for, uh, for entities. Um, in Drupal 8, it went from the entity metadata wrapper to the entity type manager, um, but they kind of handle the same way. And some of the procedural functions in Drupal 8, uh, Drupal 7 still exist in Drupal 8, um, which I'll show you as well. Um, so the first thing is I'll show you how to, some code on how to actually create an entity <coughs> in Drupal 8. So there's three ways you can do it in Drupal 8, which if you've been developing on Drupal, you know that there's like 10 different ways to do something. So it's expected here. The uh, first line here is just using a procedural function called, called entity create. And the first param uh, parameter, you, uh, you uh, tell it which entity that you want to create. And the second parameter is an array of information about the entity that you're gonna create. And then from there, it loads uh, that entity and then you just simply run a method called save. And that's pretty much it on how to actually create an entity. Uh, that's using the old procedural, which is deprecated and it's probably gonna be, I think it's re being removed in Drupal 9, uh, but you can still use it. Uh, the second way is to actually use a static call. Um, so you can see right below it, I'm doing node create, and then I'm telling it to create a type of a page. Um, I'm setting the title and then saving it. And that's um, how you do it with static call. The, the preferred method is what's called the entity manager, which um, you can see what it does is Drupal has a service to the entity type manager and uh, it's asking it to get its storage called node, which is basically what it's saying is, is give me the node, whatever handles the node entity um, CRUD operations, and then it's running a create method. And it's, so it's actually, it's going through Drupal and figuring that stuff out for you. And then it's gonna return a node object. Uh, this is the preferred method of, of doing node operations in Drupal 8 because you don't have to know, you don't have to figure out the class in which the entity that you want to create is. Um, 
but all, any of these uh, methods work. So hopefully that's not too confusing. Uh, this is how you did it in Drupal eight or Drupal seven on how to create nodes. Um, it was I won't go through every single line, but it was a lot of uh, you had to create the STD class um, and then run it through the node save function, which. Um, so as I, as I said earlier, it's not statically typed anymore. Um, and then Drupal 7, like we were talking earlier, with the Entity API it tried to standardize how to handle entities by using the uh, Entity API. And it's using the uh, first uh, line there is the Entity Create, which is creating an instance of a node. And then you wrapped it in a, in a wrapping class called the Entity Metadata Wrapper. Um, and then you, you could do more of these dynamic functions here, like setting the title of the field, and then you just run it through a save method. So you can kind of see how from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, they, they've changed for the better. Uh, how to read entities in Drupal 8. Um, again, there's three ways here. Uh, you can do the entity load um, call which just loads uh, the entity by the node ID. So in the first one, you just tell it what kind of uh, entity you want to load by the machine name. So if you actually wanted to load a user, that first parameter would be user, not node. So if you are dealing with other entities that you may not know the machine name, that's the tricky part is you might have to actually figure out what you're supposed to do there, whether it be a comment or a field collection um, if anybody's familiar with the field collection module, uh, it's an actually an entity itself. So, um, node load multiple. Uh, there's some static calls again, um, which is node colon colon load, which means it's running a static function. I don't know how familiar everybody here is with PHP and classes, but uh, basically when you see a, when you see a class name with two colons. It's running a static function, um, which saves you a little bit of lines of code instead of having to declare a class and all that. Um, you can do node load multiple, and then the third option is the entity manager, <coughs> uh, which uh, is the preferred method on actually loading them. And then in Drupal 7, again, uh, you had to use node load if you wanted to. Um, no, uh, load a node or any kind of thing like that. It's uh, node load. Has anybody used that before? Familiar with node loads? I figured uh, somebody here would be. Um, node load multiple was a way to load multiple nodes. Um, and then entity load was um, the way of using it within the entity API. Um, or actually, the entity load uh, function is actually the one entity function that is part of core, not part of the entity API, which is probably kind of confusing. But they, uh, if you actually do a node load in it, at its core, all it's doing is an entity load. Um, and here's some other examples in Drupal 7 how you uh, loaded like a taxonomy, taxonomy load term, and then user, user load. And if there's not very many back-end developers here. The, all this code is um, when you have to do custom development. Some people may never use this, but um, this, is, this part is ga mainly geared towards developers. And uh, so if you do any back-end development, ultimately you will probably end up loading a node or doing something with a user or a node at some point. And so um, hopefully it's not too confusing for those who may not be uh, developers. Um, how to update is uh, you have to no, uh, load the entity first and then you there's a method called set and the very first parameter as you can see on the static call is, uh, is a set where you can set the title of the node. So if you have a piece of content like a blog post and you want to update it with a new title whether for whatever reason, I'm not sure why you would. Maybe you are uh, pulling from a, an API or something. But the first parameter would be what field or what property you set. The second parameter is the value. 
So if we done this right here on an existing node, it would set the title to my awesome new title, and then it would set the field to my new field, and it would save it. And so in Drupal, you could go to content, and you would actually see this, this node being updated to the new values. Uh, and again, the preferred way is to use the storage manager um, to do that. Um, in Drupal 7, um, you just note, uh, done a node load, you just set the value or the property, and then you ran it through the node save function. With the end of the API, you can wrap it in a metadata wrapper and do it that way and save it um, using the entity load method as well. Uh, deleting in Drupal 8. So they got rid of most of the procedural delete functions in Drupal 8, and now all they have left is any delete multiple. So even if you want to delete one uh, node procedurally, you have to wrap it in an array. So that first uh, function right there would end up deleting a node with a node ID of one. Uh, the static call use you load, and then you just run a, 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 a method delete, and it will delete the uh, delete that node. And then the preferred method again is the storage method. Um, in Drupal 7, you just ran uh, node delete and it would delete whatever node you wanted to. Um, and then with the end of the API, you could load that node completely in a wrapper and then you could run a delete. And Accessing entity values. So in Drupal 8, it's kind of interesting because they completely change how to get uh, values from an entity, and they offer and they have a bunch of different ways of actually doing it. So I just put the probably the most common or what people might use. So the first set of code there is how you did it in Drupal 7. Um, if you've handled any nodes before, you inevitably run into the third, which is grabbing the field value in a messy multi-dimensional array and this whenever you're handling data a lot in Drupal 7 this got really messy and ugly code so again they try to kind of standardize this with the entity metadata wrapper to make it a little bit cleaner um, so instead of saying field my field language none or most pe may, people may be familiar with UND uh, zero value they made it into the metadata wrapper, which you can see um, it says wrapper filled my filled value. So it's a little bit cleaner, and they were heading that direction. Uh, in D8, um, there's several different ways of handling uh, data. Um, as you can see, I'm loading the node. Uh, you can actually turn the node into all the values into an array by using the <coughs> two array uh, method which basically it takes the node object and just turns it into an array, like um, if, you, if you prefer handling arrays to objects. Um, the title thing is here, it actually shows if you want to load it a node, want to get the title, you could say node get title and then value, or you could say node get title get string. Um, and there's several different ways you can do this, and I'm not sure if they did that on purpose or or um, or what the reasoning behind that was. Uh, if anybody's familiar with entity references, if a node has an entity reference, you can get the reference entities by just saying "get filled my reference reference entities," and what it'll do is actually go and load those entities for you, and then you can handle the data. And then you can uh, do what's called chaining methods which I probably wouldn't advise doing this because it, it gets kind of sloppy, but this very last line, what it's doing is saying, on this node, get the entity references to whatever field it is. I want to get the first um, index, which is zero, get the name, and then get the, uh, get the title. So if, if you tag something with a taxonomy term, that would result in the name, just a string of what taxonomy uh, you uh, that's associated with that blog post. Um, finding finding entities using the entity query. Has anybody used entity field query in seven? 
Um, what the entity query does, it's a SQL-like uh, syntax that, to find entities. And uh, the advantage of using this is that the entity query provides a storage engine agnostic way to find entities. And the reason that is good is because Drupal uh, provides a way to create adapter patterns or interfaces with other storage. So you can have like MongoDB or some sort of no SQL solution on the back end. Uh, with entity field query, um, if you wrote code that actually queried for entities, uh, running it through the entity query, it doesn't matter. So like say that you were on MySQL and then all of a sudden uh, the boss decides to move to uh, MongoDB. Instead of having to go back and rewrite all your code that done SQL queries, it in theory should just move over because you're using the API and the entity query to do all that querying for you. And uh, also it's really good for security because you can assume that the entity query is safe or at least if it's if there is a security vulnerability then they're going to fix it you know and you update Drupal um, as opposed to you just running a SQL query where it might not be as secure. Um, so usually the steps of actually finding a, a node with entity query is um, it, Drupal has a, ser a service called, where you call the entity query. So you just say Drupal entity query and you tell it what type of entity. So here I'm telling uh, Drupal that I want to find a node. Um, and then you can add what's called conditions, which may be like where statements if you're familiar with SQL. <clears throat> and that, what it's doing, it's saying here is I want the status to be one, which is published or unpublished. The node has, will be, I want the node to be published. Uh, the second condition I want, I'm going to make sure that it's type of page. Um, the third condition is you can actually query on a field value. So if my field had a text field that said my value, then what it does, it's going to search and do a query on the back end and find all the nodes that are published, that are a basic page, and that have a field value of my value. And then they'll execute the queries. Um, and then you can see this lines of code, if, the, if it's not empty, which means if it found the results, then you can loop through the, the results, which is an array of node IDs, and then you can node load and, and do all that uh, I put do some sweet stuff with the code that you of the node that you loaded, um, and that's kind of uh, really this this becomes a, almost a pattern in itself because if you are using the entity field query, you almost inevitably you find the nodes that you want, you load them, and then you get a value of some sort of whatever you're doing. Um, in Drupal 7, in the Entity API, they also have the Entity field query. And the only difference here is that in Drupal 8, as you can see, it was a, it's just asking for a condition. But in Drupal 7, you have property conditions and field conditions. And property conditions are stuff that's built into the node or whatever entity you are. For example, nodes when you create a content type, they always have that same stuff like promoted to home page, published or not published, author, all that stuff. So that would be considered a property because no matter how many content types you build, they're always going to have those that information stored in the, in the database. Uh, so in Drupal 7, they separated them out, and if you wanted to search on a property, you had to do it that way. Otherwise, it was a field condition. But uh, pretty much other than that, it's, it's, it's the same on how, and this is actually taken from Drupal.org, this code example. Um, let's see. Uh, entity hooks. So I'm not going to go over all these hooks because this will be literally an entire session itself, but I'm just going to go over what, uh, what hooks are out there. And uh, it, if no one's, uh, if, if you're not familiar with the hook system, uh, basically the hook system allows developers to be notified of certain events or tell Drupal um, about your code, and uh, lets lets the developers respond to those uh, events accordingly. 
And this is, a, this is important because it allows you to modify or uh, write code without actually having to change core modules or contrib module code. Uh, so this is one of the, mo the powerful things in Drupal is that this whole entire hook system. Uh, for the developers out there, you, there's actually a design pattern called an observer pattern or a visitor pattern that um, mimics this um, functionality and kind of, uh, if you're interested in, in looking that up, there's actually a design pattern for it. So um, you can see there's loading hooks, which are hooks that are invoked whenever you uh, load a node. Um, there's pre-render hooks, so as Drupal renders that entity or node or whatever, you can hook into that process to either change a value or whatever. Uh, there's all these CRUD hooks that you can hook into during the, the CRUD process. Um, if you, for whatever reason, want to do that. Translation hooks, if you want to hook in during the translation part of an entity or a node. And access hooks. Access hooks are um, determine whether or not you actually have access to view that entity or not. And you can make that determination by hooking into the uh, to the entity hooks or the access hook. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to show some live code here. So maybe if I confused you too much, maybe you'll make more sense. Um, sorry if I was going fast. Was I, did I lose everybody? <laughs> so. Um, First, I'll show you. So I created this. Uh, this is kind of hard uh, controlling a mouse while turn turning around like this. Kind of <coughs> so I created this mod Drupal 8 site, which I kind of spent like five minutes trying to style it to this camp. Um, and uh, what I did was, and what we'll go over is, I created a content type which again is a bundle of a, the node entity uh, called vehicle. And I added some fields on here, just like a make, a model, miles, year. Um, the make and the model are entity references to a term. Um, and so I'm gonna click this and this is gonna create a, a node here. And let me pull up my PHP storm. And I'm actually going to show you how this works. So, um, if you, I don't know how familiar people are with um, the creating modules in Drupal 8, but I won't explain how we got to this point, but you can create pages and, and using routing and all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, when it goes to this page, it hits this function that is in code somewhere. And what I'm doing here is the very line 20, I'm saying I want to create a type vehicle and I want to name of the title. I want it to be a, a 2017 Ford Mustang. And I make that into an array, and then I use the preferred method like we were talking about earlier, the entity type manager, and I get the storage of a node, and I create it. And what that does is it sends me back a node object uh, in PHP. And then I'm, I'm setting the values here where it says, so the body, what it requires is a, an array. Some things require a string, some an array. The reason why the body requires an array is because you can have the filtered or the, or the full HTML, whatever you, know, you use there. Um, and I do a node set body, and then I set the field bank model miles to 100 miles. The three and the five is the term, the term ID in, uh, in the taxonomy. So if that's kind of confusing, you can just send it the term and say, I want it to be that. Um, this function here, if anybody's familiar with Kent, it's a way of debugging onto the screen. If in Drupal 7, it was DPM, which DPM I think still works, but it uses Kent. Uh, but in D7, it used Krumo, which is the way that it displayed. Um, and then I'm just getting that information and sending it to a page. 
So what that results in is I created a 2017 Ford Mustang, the Meg model, and the miles. And then here's our kit. And uh, as you can see, it says the name spacing, if you're familiar with uh, PHP name spacing, that is a type of Drupal node entity node. So we're loading a node which is, a, uh, is in the class, uh, PHP class node in the module. And you can see it dumps all the information here about it, about this class, the available methods, uh, things like this. So this is good for debugging if you're if you're trying to trying to debug, you just can't. Um, so I'm gonna. I got about ten minutes left, five minutes. So I'm gonna create a couple of these, and then I'll kind of try to speed this up a little bit. Um, uh, this is just a read example. So, I don't know what just happened there. I'll just go through these code examples real quick. So, um, what it's doing is actually using the entity field query, or entity query, sorry, is the correct term. Uh, what I'm saying is I want to I look up a node entity type, and I want it to be published. I want it to be a type of vehicle, which is my content type. I want the title to be a Ford Must 2017 Ford Mustang, so it has to meet that exactly. The bank is going to be three, which is the term ID, and then I execute. Um, and then I do, I check if it's empty or not, and then uh, I load all the node here, uh, display it, and then uh, um, send it to a template to render. And that's pretty much it for loading a node. Um, updating it, so this is the update on the, uh, on the CRUD we're talking about. What it's doing is it's loading the same thing, it's looking for it. Uh, it's using the set methods to actually set the values, and then it runs its save method here. So you can load the node, update it, by the field, and then save it. Um, and then again on the delete method, doing the same thing. I'm finding it with the entity field query, um, run through here, and then loading the node using the storage manager, and then just deleting the node here. So that's pretty much it. I had the uh, I was going to show you. Um, oh, so just a little bit of extra here. This is actually the node class. So every time you create a node in Drupal in the interface, it's actually creating a, an instance of this class whenever you're loading it or viewing it. And this just kind of shows what I showed earlier where it's class node extends the content entity base. And the, all this stuff up here is just kind of information about the node, which is uh, beyond the scope of this. but. And last but not least, I actually, I was going to show you guys how I created a custom comic book entity, which is actually, um, was done in code. And to actually do that, you have to add all this, all this information. If, if you're not familiar with Asians, uh, it's a way of parsing settings and comments, which is extremely confusing because they're comments. Um, it, so it, that would be a whole other session, um, but let's see, let me get my browser back up here. And this is pretty much the end of the, the presentation, but I had, I had common questions that whenever I was researching the entity, uh, framework a long time ago. I had uh, why would I create my own content type or uh, sorry entity type? Um, you usually won't. You probably can go through developing uh, Drupal websites with never having to create your own custom entity. But there may be some instances where you want to create your own custom entity, um, so you won't flood the net, uh, the node table. So for example, I had, one time I had a client where. We wanted to pull all their Twitter feeds in, which were thousands and thousands of just tweets. And so we created a custom entity, and um, it 
creates its own table in the database, so it's not flooding the node table, which you can get performance issues that way. And then whenever you click on the content to view all the content, um, you, you're not seeing thousands and thousands of tweets. So that was one of the reasons why we created our own custom entity. Um, and then why should I not just use my own table for data if you wanted to use it? Um, you can, but you lose all the access to the Entity API at that point. So really, the Entity API is the preferred way to handle data modeling and, and in Drupal in general. So you can, uh, it's kind of a preferred way of doing it. Although you, if you have a use case where you want your own table, then yeah, I mean, you, that's obviously possible. Um, and here's my summary. The entities are integral, integral part of Drupal. Uh, entities have changed a lot from Drupal 7 to 8. Uh, Drupal has a core entity CRUD API, finding entities uh, safely using entity query, and the entity API has a lot of hooks. And that's pretty, uh, there's references here if you guys want to check out the slide later and learn more about it. Um, does anybody have any questions? a lot of information to kind of throw into 45 minutes. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you.